the legend that is Harry Romero drops in with his five things every producer needs to know. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Graham Farmer from Data Transmission, and today on our Big Question series, I welcome the legend that is Harry Romero. For those that know their house music and love house music, you'll know who Harry Romero is. He's part of the big subliminal crew with Eric Murillo, um, and those guys, I've been a fan of his for a long time. I bought some of his records, so I'm absolutely privileged to have Harry on the Big Question series today. For those of you who haven't seen our Big Question series before, it is a one question series where I ask producers, DJs, label heads to give us their insights around one big question. So today I asked Harry Merrow to give his five big things that every producer needs to know. Hey everybody, what's up? This is Harry Romero, and I want to tell you guys the five things that every producer should know. Number one, know your history. Very important to know where the origins of all this house music comes from. Important to know people who Frankie Knuckles is, Ron Hardy, Masters at Work, Tony Humphreys. Know who these people are. It's important to know that, in my opinion, because it, you just owe it to yourself, man. If, if you're going to be part of, of uh, this, this beautiful thing that has brought me so much joy and happiness and has basically brought me around the world, you, you, it's important to know these things because it's the history, it's the core of everything. Once you know that and you start discovering some of the music that inspired them, it's, it's, it's inspiring as a creative person to find inspiration in those that came before you. Know, know the origins, origins of disco. Know when disco went back underground in the late 70s. And um, I think that once you start doing the research and, and really digging into the history, like I said, you're going to discover some amazing music that had you not been looking, you would not have discovered. Number two, don't be too hard on yourself. Any creative, any creative person will tell you that we have our, our moments when we just can't come up with anything, and we it's 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 inevitable that it's inevitable that that is going to happen to you. Any creative person um, goes through that situation, but it's important to stay in that captain's chair, stay in the producer's chair, and um, you know sometimes you got to reset the the um, you got to reset your brain, reset your reset your senses. Um, I do that by listening to other kinds of music. I listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of just stuff that I don't normally listen to. And sometimes in listening to that, it will take you from not having any ideas or whack ideas to really having something cool that you can really sink your teeth into. And it's got a lot of, you know, potential. Number three, get out of your comfort zones. I see you. You're too comfortable. If you're too comfortable, you're not you're not you're not growing as an artist. You have to get out of your comfort zones and really put yourself in situations where, you know, oh, this feels strange, but let me work through it. And in doing that, you're going to grow as an artist, man. I mean, the whole point of this is is not to get bookings, and that that's going to come up. The whole point of this is for me, and hopefully it is for you as well. But you know, we're all in, we're all different. For me, the point is creating something amazing, creating something beautiful. Even if it's a drum track, that drum track's got to speak. It's got to have a personality. It's got to be creative. It's got to be like, wow, like, you know, when I'm in the studio, I hear something that's crazy or, or you know, in a, in a good way, I, I took my head. I'm like, whoa, what the freak was that, man? How'd they do that? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, man. So get out of your comfort zones, and I promise you, you will grow and you will learn way much more than if you stayed in that comfort zone and, you know, you made those tracks in 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. That's cool. That's fine and dandy. I do it myself. But you have to be able to, to see it for what it is and know that you're in that comfort zone. Step out of it, and you will grow as an artist. Number four, don't make tracks for bookings. That's not art, man. You're not making art. You're following the trend, man. By that, I don't mean know the market. You got to know the marketplace. But at the same time, if you're making tracks to get bookings, man, you're whack. Straight up. There's no other way for me to say it. Create art. Create stuff that, yes, DJs that you like and that are important are going to play. 
but don't succumb to the copy and paste stuff that's been happening. That shit is whack. Stop that. Stop making tracks to get bookings. They're two separate things. Either you're a badass DJ or you're a badass producer. You can be both. There's not too many. So think about that. And number five, don't be afraid to ask questions. Early on in, in my career, I tried to figure things out on my own, and I did for the most part, but there was questions that I should have asked that would have allowed me to spend more time in the studio being productive than chasing my tail and trying to figure out who did what and how they did this. Ask questions. The, the, you know, it's, it's a common saying, but the only stupid question is the one you don't ask, and I really believe in that. You'd be surprised how many established people like myself love to answer and try and help the, the upcoming generation of producers and beat makers and DJs. Don't be afraid to ask questions, man. These five things, you know, for me, I don't know, like maybe tomorrow you ask me what are my five things and they may change. But right now, today, where I'm sitting, those are the five things. Love you guys all. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Peace. Did you agree with Harry's big five big things? Which was your favorite? I definitely agree that you need to know your house music legends. And Harry, for me, is one of those. I'm really pleased he joined us. Which was your favourite? Drop in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear from you and I'll dive in the comments as well and well, let's chat about it. Thanks again for joining me this week on The Big Question. I've been Graham Farmer. I'll see you next time. Bye.